Good afternoon and welcome to the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels. Our entrance hymn can be found in the ritual song hymnal number 929, Gather Us In. Please stand and join in singing, Gather Us In. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O oh God, giver of heavenly gifts, who in St. Aloysius Gonzaga joined penitence to a wonderful innocence of life, grant through his merits and intercession that though we have failed to follow him in innocence, we may imitate him in penitence. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, consider this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly, and whoever sows bountifully will also reap bountifully. Each must do as already determined, 
without sadness or compulsion, where God loves a cheerful giver. Moreover, God is able to make every grace abundant for you, so that in all things, always having all you need, you may have an abundance for every good work. As it is written, He scatters abroad, He gives to the poor. His righteousness endures forever. The one who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You are being enriched in every way for all generosity, which through us produces thanksgiving to God. The word of the Lord. Bless the man who fears the Lord. Bless the man who fears the Lord, who greatly delights in his commands. His posterity shall be mighty upon the earth. The upright generation shall be blessed. Bless the man who fears the Lord. Wealth and riches shall be in his house. His generosity shall endure forever. Light shines through the darkness for the upright. He is gracious and merciful and just. Bless the man who fears the Lord. Lavishly he gives to the poor. His generosity shall endure forever. His horn shall be exalted in glory. Bless the man who fears the Lord. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said to his disciples, take care, to not, take, take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received the reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right is doing, so that your almsgiving may be in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites, they neglect their appearance so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you. They have received the reward. But when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face so that you may not appear to others to be fasting, except to your Father who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden will repay you. 
the Gospel of the Lord. Good afternoon, everyone. I remember when I first um, began my time in seminary formation uh, that one of the first things that my spiritual director told me, one of the things that we do is we see a spiritual director on a regular basis, and one of the first things that my spiritual director told me, he said, two things, he said, if you're faithful in the, in the small things, it's greater to be faithful in the bigger things. And he said also, true faithfulness, when you are truly faithful to God, and on others as well, actually, you don't only live that faithfulness when it's apparent or when it's visible, but you live that faithfulness when others can't see it. And I think all of us know that, right? Faithfulness is not just something that we do when it's, um, when it's convenient to us, when it's beneficial, when we receive maybe some sort of praise for being faithful. That can be faithfulness to God, of course, but also faithfulness to your husband, your wife, faithfulness to your children, faithfulness to your work, faithfulness to the things that you are called to do by virtue of your life. Faithfulness is not just when it's apparent, but genuineness and authentic authenticity is even in those moments when, when others, uh, when we're faithful, when others can't see that. And I think in some ways Jesus is speaking about this, right? If there's somebody that he criticized, if there's somebody that he was um, pretty strong um, to speak against, were those that were hypocrites. And oftentimes he refers to the, 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 the Pharisees and the, the teachers of the faith in this way. Because he, said, he says they do all these things, right, to, to, to show that they, they have a faith. But inside, they're lacking something. They only do it when it's apparent. And he says, pray to your father in secret. Fast, give almsgiving in secret. Fast in secret. You don't have to go out there and do all these things so that others can see you. And I think for us, my brothers and sisters, it's a real lesson. If this is about a relationship, if what we do as Christians, as Catholics, is about a relationship, the greatest moments that we should strive to be faithful is when no one is around. Do you do the right thing when no one is watching? Do you tell the truth even when you know somebody is not going to find out if you lie or not? Do you pray outside of a setting like this in the intimacy of your room, one-on-one -on -one in, in that encounter with the Lord? When we do that, there is real grace that comes and a real conversion, a, a transformation of our hearts because we become, um, in that faithfulness, we become more like our, like, our, like our Lord who is faithful to his Father in all things. Today we celebrate the, the, the feast of St. Aloysius and just like all the saints, right? It wasn't the saints who weren't doing things for the sake of receiving glory, but they did things to be faithful and to honor Christ. It wasn't about their own pride. It wasn't about what they received in return, because many of them, if not all of them, didn't receive anything in return in, in regards to the world. But they remained faithful to the Lord, and they, they gained eternal life. And so let's ask especially today, St. Aloysius and Our Blessed Mother, for the grace to be able to be faithful in the small things, in the things that might seem insignificant, so that we can be faithful in the greater things, that our faithfulness is not just dependent on the benefit, but it depends on simply that we want an encounter and a relationship with Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, grateful for the graces God showers on us, we turn to him in prayer. For the church. 
that she stand against all forms of bigotry, hate, and sacrilege while upholding the dignity of human person. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the Holy Spirit may inspire civic leaders in creating policies that promote the well-being of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may provide compassionate caregivers for those who struggle with mental or physical illness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of the church, that the Spirit of the Lord be upon them to announce good news to the poor and to heal the brokenhearted. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That God may soon welcome all who have died to be with him forever in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Peter Fan, for whom this Mass is being offered, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God of all goodness, hear the prayers of your people who yearn to do your will. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. My brothers and sisters, we invite you to come forward and place a donation in the basket near the sanctuary to help the mission of the cathedral. And as always, we're extremely grateful for your, for your generosity. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be made acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Grant us, O Lord, that by the example of Saint Aloysius, we may take our place at the heavenly banquet, clothed always in our wedding garment, so that by participating in this mystery, we may possess the riches of your grace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. 
or in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence by which you call human nature back to its original holiness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts you promise in the new world to come. And so, with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Jose, our Bishop, and all the clergy, Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. To him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, together as brothers and sisters, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number eight, 784. We remember. Number seven, eight, four.
Let us pray. Bring us who have been fed with the food of angels, O Lord, to serve you in purity of life and following the example of Saint Aloysius, whom we honor today. May we preserve, may we persevere in constant thanksgiving through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just a couple announcements. Those of you who would like a parking validation, those are available to your right by the bronze doors, and those are valid for 90 minutes. And finally, I'd like to recognize anybody who is visiting the Cathedral of Our Lady of the Angels for the first time. And this is your first time, I invite you to raise your hand. Well, as always, we welcome you, and this is, this is your home. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ.